Hello, this is Corey Cook speaking from King's University College ITS. Today I'd like to speak to you about using Zoom for video conferencing and teaching, especially if you have little or no experience using Zoom. Joining a Zoom meeting is easy and can be done from a computer, smartphone, or tablet. To get started, visit westernuniversity.zoom.us slash download. This will allow you to download the Zoom client for meetings by clicking here. Once this has been done, you can ensure that your webcam and microphone are working properly by joining a private test meeting at westernuniversity.zoom.us slash test. Clicking on the join button will open up a private test meeting where you can try out your webcam and your microphone. You can join a Zoom meeting without a webcam and a microphone, but you will not be seen or heard by the other participants in the meeting without these devices. Most laptops have a camera and a mic built in. Desktop computers usually require that a separate USB webcam is installed. All webcams have built-in microphones. To join a Zoom meeting that will be hosted by someone else, click the Join URL that was sent to you via email by the meeting host. Alternatively, you can join a meeting by clicking on the Join a Meeting button within the Zoom application. I'll show you that now. You can click on the Join a Meeting button here within the Zoom application and enter the, join, enter the meeting's ID number and password if the meeting has one. This information can be sent to you by the meeting host also. If you'd like to schedule and host your own meeting, you can visit Western uni westernuniversity.zoom.us. All staff, students, and faculty at Western have access to their own Zoom accounts using their Western credentials. Once you've logged in, just click on Sign In, you'll be taken to your Zoom profile page. Scheduling a Zoom meeting can be done by clicking on the Meetings tab at the left margin here, and then by clicking on Schedule a New Meeting. The meeting scheduling form is intuitive and requires only basic information such as the meeting's title, the date and start time, and the estimated duration. There are other options such as whether or not the host and participant video will be enabled by default and whether or not you'll allow people to call in or use computer audio or both. Uh, I recommend just choosing computer audio. From here you can scroll down and you can enable join before host, mute participants upon entry, enable waiting room, allow only authenticated users to join, or to record the meeting automatically on the local computer. From there, you can click Save. At this point, the host can opt to copy the meeting invitation here, or simply copy and paste, or copy the join URL here. This information can then be pasted within an email uh, to your participants or within an, an OWL announcement. Clicking on the Meetings button at the left margin will show you your newly scheduled meeting and any other scheduled meetings that you have. It's worth noting that once the join URL has been distributed, if your participants have little experience with Zoom, they will often join the meeting well in advance, often days ahead of time, to ensure their familiarity and compatibility with Zoom. When, participants, when a participant joins the meeting without the host present, an email is generated from Zoom to the host announcing that your meeting attendees are waiting. Don't be alarmed. This is simply to let you know that someone has joined the meeting and is likely just testing things out. To avoid this, suggest that your participants join the westernuniversity.zoom.us slash test site. At the appropriate time, your meeting can be started by logging into your Western Zoom account, clicking on Meetings, and then clicking on the Start button uh, next to the appropriate meeting. Doing so will launch Zoom, where you will then see your uh, microphone and video camera buttons in the bottom left corner. You can choose to mute the video or the audio in this manner. You'll also notice the Manage Participants and Chat features here. If you enable these windows, 
you can see who's in the meeting and it will allow you to chat with those individuals as well. You can also press the record button here, which will allow you to record the meeting to your local computer. Once the meeting is over, you, will, you can choose the location to which that you would like that meeting uh, video saved. The default um, is a document, uh, pardon me, a folder within the documents folder on your computer. Um, once you've recorded a meeting, a Zoom folder is created within the documents folder. If at any point during a meeting you would like to adjust your audio settings, you can do so by clicking on the arrow beside the microphone icon and you can select your microphone or your speakers or you can go into your audio settings and you can turn up the volume of your speakers and the volume of your uh, microphone here. I usually opt to uncheck automatically adjust volume. When your meeting is over, you can click on the end meeting button at the bottom right of the Zoom window. Then you can click on end meeting for all or leave meeting. If you click on leave the meeting, any participants that remain within the meeting will continue to, to can continue with their video conference, even without your presence. If you schedule a video conference and send that and send the join URL to your participants, they can conduct that video conference without your presence. If you click on end meeting for all, the meeting will be over for everyone. If you need help with setting up and using Zoom, please complete the ITS work request form at kings.uwo.ca slash ITS and click on the ITS work request form here. This is the quickest and most efficient way to receive assistance for all your technical needs. I hope this has been helpful. Again, my name is Corey Cook uh, with King's University College ITS.